Hello everyone, my name is Nicole Glenn. I'm a field agronomist for Bex Hybrids in the South. Today we're going to talk about assessing your corn and soybean seedlings for frost damage. Over the past couple of nights we have seen nighttime temperatures get um, to those lower to mid 30s. So this is something that we're going to be scouting anywhere from three to five days after that frost occurred. But sometimes visual symptoms can show up within one to two days so it does not take long. But we want to be able to give that plant some time to recover if it's able to do so. So the first areas that we want to be looking and scouting in the field is going to be low-lying areas, um, high residue, so that no-till acre can be a little bit more prone because it takes a little bit longer for those soils to warm up in the spring. And then lastly, dry, loose soils. You can see temperature um, variations um, be a little bit more drastic in those soils. So if we think about soybeans, um, that growing point is going to be above the ground um, as soon as they emerge. So that makes them a little more susceptible to that damage than corn is. So if the temperatures get between 28 to 30 degrees for several hours is typically when we start to see some of this damage occurring. The most susceptible soybean is going to be that VE soybean. So just when it's hooking, so you can see the hypocotyl trying to pop out. That hypocotyl is very sensitive um, and we do not want to lose that. That's going to be, that's going to be the number one thing. So um, if the soybean cotyledons are out of the ground, they can typically recover a little bit better because those are the energy reserves um, and those growing points are able to, um, to recover as long as you have those cotyledons on there. So symptoms you will see are going to be water-soaked lesions on those cotyledons, um, those leaves or those hypocotyls. You can kind of see this on the screen, but soybeans are very tough and they're able to compensate very well for a reduced amount of sand. So make sure you give them the chance. Um, so come back and scout them to make sure we can see um, growing point shooting out um, right in between those cotyledons is typically where you're gonna be able to see, see that recovery there. Okay, so now moving on to corn. So frost won't typically kill a corn plant unless the temperature drops low enough to drive the cold into the soil and kill that growing point. So the growing point on corn actually remains below the soil surface until about V5. So, so the growing point is protected when it's underground by those warmer temperatures. So anytime the air temperature dips below 32 degrees for an extended period of time, um, that is when we're going to see some of this damage occur, as well as looking at some of those young tender leaves is typically where you're going to see some of those water soaked lesions occur there. So if new leaves are not visible three to four days after that frost has occurred, we want to be checking that growing point. So you're just going to take your knife and go right down that stem, look at that growing point down at the bottom. And if it's not white or a cream light yellow, then that means that we ha had some uh, damage occur to that growing point um, and if that is in the vast majority of the field this is going to warrant a replant. Bex actually put together a replant guide this year so I encourage you to check that out and if you have any questions please feel free to reach out to myself or any of your Bex representatives. Thanks.